Welcome to Spirant as we look at how RF channel emulation helps developers see how 5G NR systems behave under real-world radio conditions. We'll look at the impact that reflections, noise, motion, and other radio propagation effects have on the achievable data rate of a 5G user endpoint. We have an end-to-end -end 5G NSA system configured. A 5G NSA G node B emulator along with a corresponding LTE E node B as required in NSA mode, is connecting through the Vertex RF channel emulator to a UE emulator. We're visiting today with the National Instruments team in Austin, Texas. We're here in their 5G software-defined radio lab. The base station emulator is a 5G emulator built on the world-class National Instruments software-defined radio solution. Spirant's Vertex RF channel emulator is in the center, with its UI on the monitor on top, and the UE is National's UE emulator also built on their SDR system, and the UE's user interface is on the large monitor. Before we can get things running, we have to set the configuration in the channel emulator. We'll select a 4x4 MIMO configuration. You can see there are many predefined configurations, or you can build your own. In 5G NSA mode, the LTE anchor is established first. Then the UE makes a 5G addition request, and after the configuration and ratch, we're connected to the 5G NR G node B. We can see the band we're connected to, as well as the cell ID. We're in a 4x4 MIMO configuration, and you can see a real-time view of each of the downlink 64 QAM constellations, nice and clean. We've started a push of data downlink to the UE, and we're achieving specified max throughput in this configuration of close to 600 megabits per second at the phi layer, with about 400 megabits per second MAC over the data link. Now let's introduce some fading. There are many established RF channel models that one can use, and here we're selecting the TDLA 3010. This is a 3GPP defined model as specified for 5G NR. Vertex also allows you to modify these models and create custom models. So we select the model and enable it, and right away we see the fading effects. This TDLA model is challenging. There's no line of sight signal, only multipaths, and there are many of them, as you might get in an urban environment. The UE is moving slowly at 3 kilometers an hour, simulating a pedestrian. The downlink constellations get fuzzy as the UE deals with the slow fading due to the device motion and the fast fading induced by all the multipath signals. Now we're getting CRC failures in red as we try to decode the PHI control packets. However, the allocations are passing often enough to sustain around 350 megabits per second of MAC layer traffic. Finally, when we revert to a clean channel through the channel emulator, the data rate instantly recovers as the bit error rate drops to zero. Thanks for joining us today as we looked at the Spirant Vertex channel emulator in a 5G NR end-to-end -end testbed.